Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and today's video is going to be on the top skills to learn for cybersecurity. For anyone who is in their cybersecurity career, whether you're just getting started as a beginner or if you already have a few years of experience, the first thing on this list is vulnerability management. I think this is one of the most important areas to start in because at the core of cybersecurity, your main job is detecting and preventing vulnerabilities as well as being aware of how attackers and other threat actors are taking advantage and exploiting vulnerabilities. If you're able to do these two things well as a cybersecurity professional, then I guarantee that you'll be very valuable to your company and to your team. Vulnerability management includes identifying, classifying, prioritizing, as well as remediating or mitigating software and hardware vulnerabilities. Your goal is to identify and respond to vulnerabilities like software issues and misconfigurations that could lead to exploitation by attackers and lead to the release of sensitive data, escalated privileges for a potential attacker or anyone who isn't explicitly allowed certain access, disruption to business operations, as well as damage to reputation or financial loss. Vulnerability management is one of the key areas or key pillars in cybersecurity, no matter what area of cybersecurity that you're in. If you're in offensive security or the red team, then part of your job directly is to look for those vulnerabilities that applications may have and be able to exploit them or take advantage of them. And of course, have those vulnerabilities remediated and patched based on the vulnerability management process that your company has and on the other side of things on the blue team or the defensive security team your efforts are much more so on the preventative side so you may be running security scans code scanners you may be getting alerts or reading cybersecurity news about the new vulnerabilities that are coming out different patches that are coming out from vendors that impact your company so everything really does tie back to vulnerability management and a company with a good vulnerability management system is going to be much more secure than a company that isn't paying attention to the specific area so as a cybersecurity professional i really think that one of the areas that you should delve into a little bit is vulnerability management and you can do this by learning more about the exploits and vulnerabilities that are in the wild right now that may be buzzing in the news, also getting experience or at least taking some courses on the popular vulnerability management tools that companies are currently using. Many vendors typically will have some free courses or free resources for you to review to learn how to use their tools because companies also want a wide adaptation of their tools. So many of these courses are free if you just sign up for an account. The next thing I want to discuss is user security and multi-factor authentication. This is something else that every cybersecurity professional should get right. Having the right user access as well authentication is really important and a key factor of that is multi-factor authentication and i would like to thank yubico for sponsoring today's video if you don't know what a yubikey is yet i guarantee that this will be an important part of your cybersecurity career when it comes to hardware authentication the yubikey is a hardware authentication device manufactured by yubico to protect access to computers networks and online systems that support one-time passwords public key cryptography authentication and universal second factor protocols it's no secret that securing our online accounts is a hassle between work and personal use we have hundreds of online accounts with most of our lives being digital. Just having a username and password is no longer going to cut it, especially in this cybersecurity environment where hackers can easily obtain plain text usernames and passwords for many of the accounts that you currently use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm not sure about you, but I definitely don't want to be copying and pasting one-time passwords multiple times a day. The YubiKey from YubiCo takes away the headache of online security and makes it simple and easy to integrate into your everyday life. The YubiKey is a physical security key to protect the digital you. It keeps your account safe from hackers by adding an extra layer of security beyond just a username and password. In other words, two-factor authentication. In fact, security keys like the YubiKey are the only two-factor authentication method proven to prevent phishing and account takeovers. The best part is that it only takes a simple touch of the key to log in. There's no need for batteries or mobile connectivity and no more copying and pasting annoying one-time passwords from your phone. And without physical access to your YubiKey, hackers won't be able to get access into your account. So if you're ready to say yes to security that is so simple that you forget about it, the YubiKey allows you to have peace of mind wherever you go. YubiKey works with hundreds of services, including Gmail, YouTube, Twitter, Apple ID, Dropbox, and many, many more. Just one key protects all of your online accounts. And you also don't have to worry about whether you're using a laptop, a tablet, or a phone. The YubiKey comes in a variety of different form factors, so you can choose the key or two that work best for you. And as someone who has personally used YubiKey for work, it is definitely a lifesaver and a game changer in terms of how easy and simple they make it to be able to use two-factor authentication. It definitely makes life a whole lot easier when you're logging into various different apps throughout the day. And it's something that I use for my personal accounts as well. So if you guys are interested in checking out YubiKey, I would definitely recommend checking out the link in my description and I'm so excited to be partnering with them. Thank you again to Yubico for sponsoring today's video. The next thing I want to discuss in this video is scripting skills. So I probably sound like a broken record when I bring up scripting but trust me I really think that it's one of the skills that you won't regret learning whether you're going to cybersecurity or if you go into any other area in tech. 
I think scripting is a great place to start, especially if you're a coding beginner, because scripting is typically more lightweight, and you can usually start with a simpler language like Python or even JavaScript if you're looking for a popular language in cybersecurity to learn. But if you're a complete beginner, then I would recommend starting out with Python. And even if you're not going to be scripting or coding on a day-to-day -day basis, it'll be really helpful for you to have those scripting skills in hand so that in the future, when your team needs you to do some kind of automation or some kind of scraping or some kind of analysis that would typically take a lot longer if done manually, if you're able to spend an hour or two writing a quick Python script to be able to do the thing that would take you four hours to do, then honestly, it becomes a no-brainer. And once you start picking up the skills and learning one language, you'll also be able to quickly pick up other languages that you'll be able to better utilize for future jobs that you go into, future projects that you work on. And honestly, it becomes even more impressive if you're applying for a security engineering role and you not only know the foundations of cybersecurity, but are also able to show that you have the scripting skills that can back you up if the team does need it. There are plenty of free walkthroughs and courses that you can find online that can get you started in scripting, whether you want to learn Python, Go, JavaScript, or any other language you kind of have your eye on. And I really think that in general, coding is one of the most valuable skills you can have in tech or even outside of tech. And it also helps you more easily talk to developers or engineers, and you're able to connect with them on a technical level that is more in depth than a security engineer who may not know how to code. The next thing I want to talk about is incident response. I think this one, depending on where you're coming from, will definitely be very important. For example, if you're joining a cybersecurity team that is frontline facing and you're the one that gets directly pinged, you're on call for different incidents that may happen or you're on the SOC and you're one of the first responders and you're the one opening up that bridge line and bringing teams together to work on triaging and remediating the incident. While every company's incident response process is going to look different, I really think that it's important for you to learn kind of the basics of what that process looks like. For example, the four phases of the NIST incident response lifecycle are preparation, detection and analysis, containment, eradication and recovery, as well as post-incident activity. When working as a cybersecurity professional, one of the most important things is incident response because that is actually when boots are on the ground, depending on how severe the incident actually is. This will also heavily depend on the type of company that you join. For example, if you're working in a financial services company versus a marketing company, the financial services company is probably going to have a much more vigorous incident response process. And they're also going to be the ones with heavily documented steps as well as very strict guidelines on the documentation of evidence. And they may also have an overall higher number of incidents compared to a marketing company, for example. This is primarily because of the fact that many incidents typically happen from externally, not to say that there aren't incidents that are caused by internal happenings, for example, a malicious insider threat, but typically incidents are going to be from some kind of external source or external vendor or news, and it's going to be your job as a cybersecurity team to get together and focus on remediating and triaging, as well as, of course, keeping up communications, which is all going to be part of your incident response plan. The next thing I want to touch on is secure DevOps. Secure DevOps expands on the impact of the DevOps team by adding security practices to the software development and delivery process. By integrating application security principles and practices into software development and operations, teams can deliver new software and services at agile speed without compromising on application security. So this all goes back to the CI-CD pipeline. It's essentially learning at a high level, a set of practices, guidelines, and tooling that bring together software development, IT, and security. And the main goal of this is to be able to help your organization or your development teams provide software at a faster speed that is still agile, but also be able to incorporate security, whether it's reviews or code scans or, or anything else that your company incorporates into their software development lifecycle or SDLC to be able to have a more secure end product rather than coming up with the requirements for a story or a feature, having a developer work on it for one or two sprints, and then at the end of it all, come to find out that there is a big hole or vulnerability with the code that was written. When the cybersecurity team is finally notified about a specific change and then having to roll back the code, remediate the vulnerabilities, verify that the vulnerabilities are fixed, and basically just adding maybe even a month to the development lifecycle because the cybersecurity team wasn't notified notified in advance about the new feature or about the vulnerability or the code that was being pushed to production. The next thing on this list is threat intelligence. This one definitely directly ties back to staying aware in cybersecurity of the different threats and exploits that are being exploited in the wild. While you may not be going as in-depth as a threat intelligence team, it is helpful to start using some OSINT or open source intelligence tools out there since they are free to use and it'll be very helpful to you to be able to get some practice with it. If you're someone who hasn't used OSINT tools in the past, it's pretty crazy the kind of research and data that you can find through these tooling. Whether you're looking at Shodan or Maltigo, I think those are two popular ones that you may look into. Part of your job as a cybersecurity professional is to stay in the know of what's happening in the sector, whether it's news or vendors that may impact your company. Next up is command line basics and tooling. So I won't go too in depth into this one because I'm sure you guys already know what this is about. If you're just getting started in cybersecurity, learning some basic commands or command line tooling or command line tools is going to be really helpful to you. Whether you're going to be using a Linux or a Windows machine, 
machine. A really quick and easy way to do this is by going on Google and looking up the top 20 or 30 common commands for Windows or Linux and at least being able to use them or just knowing that there is a command out there that does XYZ is really helpful for when you do end up needing to do something on the command line even as a complete beginner. And of course, lots of popular cybersecurity tooling does live on the command line. For example, Nmap and Metasploit are probably two of the popular ones that you've heard of. And the sooner that you get acclimated and used to working off of the command line, the better off you'll be. And the last thing I wanted to discuss in this video is security standards and frameworks, aka auditing and compliance. So obviously this one isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I really think it's important, especially if you're going into a small to medium sized company that is growing, you're typically going to be going through audits or different compliance things or something along those line. Being aware of NIST framework or what a SOC 2 is or the difference between a SOC 2 type 2 versus a SOC 2 type 1, the different ISO certifications and the requirements, even at a very high level, is going to be very helpful. If you're working in finance, there's different compliance and regulatory things that you'll have to follow there. As well as working in healthcare, there's also going to be a lot of compliance you're going to have to follow and keep up with. I know not everyone's favorite thing is auditing and compliance, whether it's gathering evidence or understanding what your requirements are, or even just speaking directly with an auditor. These things can definitely be overwhelming, but again, it is very important for your company. And this is also where cybersecurity ties back to the bottom line of a company. When it comes to getting customers, when it comes to generating revenue, this is your bottom line. And customers are going to eventually ask for your compliance things, as well as whether or not you have XYZ certification. So these are all things that you wanna keep up with when you're working in cybersecurity, even if you're not directly going to be doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything in this video is going to be relevant to your cybersecurity career at some point, and having that background knowledge about it is going to make you an even more valuable resource to your team. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that you found this helpful, especially for those of you who are just getting started. Thank you again to Yubico for sponsoring today's video. If you guys want to check out a YubiKey and get one for yourself, you can check out the link in my description below to help you stay more secure as you go into your cybersecurity career. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.